Hey everyone, this is Zephyr, and welcome to the Bailey Wiki channel, where we teach everyday DMs how to create truly amazing experiences for their players by combining art and technology. If you're a DM who likes to wow your players and you're using platforms like Foundry Virtual Tabletop and Dungeon Draft, then you're in the right place. Today, we're automating Foundry VTT once again with Monk's Active Tile Triggers, this time combining it with Scene Transitions. If you're not familiar with Scene Transitions, you can check out our full video overview on the link on screen now. Now with Scene Transitions, we can edit and create transitions between our different scenes involving text, images, sounds, and more using this interface, or what we're going to be focusing on today, macros. This is a really quick example macro that we basically just copy and pasted from the module page or GitHub, and we went into this in the scene transitions video. Basically all it's doing is playing a image with a overlay and some text and not doing a whole lot else. We're going to take this to the next level. You can see here that there is a scene ID field for actually changing the scene. And the first thing we're going to do is make a new macro, which I've already created called switch scenes here. All of these macros are gonna be available in the description and on the Bailiwiki Discord. And we're gonna go to the town square here and we'll zoom in really quick. And you can see I'm using let destination equal. I tend to find it cleaner to declare a variable for what I'm going to be changing so that I don't mess up anything down here in the actual macro syntax, but your mileage may vary. It's all up to you. We're gonna be using the function game scenes get name and then feeding it our scene name. And you can see that's in quotation marks here, and that's going to be the town, town square. I just copy that directly from the configuration file, and then dot ID. So this is going to go through our game scenes, and it's going to look for something with the exact name, the town square, and it's going to give us the ID here. And then we're storing that as the variable destination and feeding it to the scene ID option within the scene transitions macro. You can also grab the scene ID by pasting this exact same line of code into the console with F12. And you'll see that it will return the exact same ID that you could then copy and paste into the macro. But this is a lot cleaner to just have this command directly inside of your macro. It's just a lot less work on you to update the macro and also a lot less moving parts to get wrong. So I prefer to have that inside of the macro itself and it's just a lot easier, but so that you know, that's a way you can do that as well. So now that we have a way to get our scene ID and store it as a variable and then pass it into the function, it's going to be filling in again, that scene ID option within the scene transitions macro. And we're gonna execute through everything and we'll see that if we click it now, we're going to switch and activate the scene over here for the town square. So this is a really easy way to upgrade the macro so that the macro can work just like a regular scene transition would. However, there are a couple of weak points that we want to address. You'll notice that if we attempt to use this macro to go to a scene that's already active, then it's not going to pull us over. It has to be activating a whole new scene that is not currently active in order to move everyone over. Additionally, this is going to move everyone over and we don't necessarily want everybody to be pulled to the scene when we're clicking on it. If for example, we're using this for teleportation or changing scenes on a landing page. And one of the more glaring issues is also that if we use this macro, not only are we moving everyone, but also we're playing the transition for everyone. So again, if we're using this for a personal effect, such as a landing page or teleportation, we don't want everyone to have to see the transition and it might not always make sense for everyone to see that transition. Here, I've slapped this macro onto a Monk's Active Tau Triggers, and you'll see that we have the same problem when we use that macro there too. So we need to engineer a new solution for all of these issues. First, let's address the issue of showing the transition to everyone. Then we can combine things with Monk's Active Tau Triggers to make things a little bit easier. So here I've made a scene transitions no destination macro for use with Monk's Active Tau Triggers. You'll notice that it's very similar to the example scene transition macro. Both of these have false for the scene ID, so it's not going to be changing the scene. But we have added a new option here called users, and this is not covered in the API on the module page or the GitHub. But basically, this is the people that are going to be shown the macro. 
And Monk's active tau triggers will actually pass that information on to the macro of, you know, who's the triggering player that's actually using the macro. Switching to our GM and player view, when I activate this macro as the GM, you'll notice that it's only affecting the GM themselves when they use this. So the macro will also respect the triggering user when it's activated by the macro bar. I can then add this onto a monk's active tau trigger, and we're going to use a separate action in order to change the scene. We're going to be running the same macro using the run macro action. And we'll notice that we have run as triggering player. This isn't necessary if you are only ever going to use this as GM, but for most applications, you're going to want to have the triggering player. So that's returning the correct field for users to the macro. Then change scene is a separate action. And I just specified this city street optimized. And now when I click on this monk's active tile trigger, it's going to go ahead and take me over to the specified scene. It's important to have the macro run before the scene change, otherwise this gets a little choppy. This is a little less smooth than running the scene change through a macro directly though, so that's going to be our next step, is combining the view into the same macro. Here I've set up a new tile with a new macro that is going to be the view only version I'm calling it. And when we click on this, it's going to take us to a new scene. So we're firing this as a view macro here, and it's moving us over without necessarily activating it. If we open up this macro, we can take a look at everything that we're doing here. So you'll notice that we have that users field down at the bottom so that again, it's only going to trigger for whoever's using the tile. Then up at the top, we're having this let destination equals and then the name of the scene. So this is what we'll replace with whatever scene we want. We're going to use the variable for just the scene name. Again, we're going to keep it as simple and clean as possible so we don't accidentally mess up any of our other macro syntax. And then we're going to feed it into this function down here. It's very similar to the one we used for the ID. It's going to be game, scenes, get name, and then we're going to feed it the variable destination. So just like we have the scene name in quotations up above, that's going to get put into this function. And then finally, we're going to use the view option at the end rather than ID. So this is going to directly take us to the scene to view it instead of grabbing the ID and putting it into the macro. So if we close this, we can open up the tile. You can see I'm just using that simple run macro as the only action here with this macro, the scene transition view only, and we're running it as the triggering player. The next version is what I like to call the flexible scene version of the tile. And this is where we can really take the power of Monk's active tile triggers and combine it with scene transitions to take things to a whole new level. Rather than using the same macro to go to the same destination over and over again, we can have a single macro work for multiple destinations. So here that I'm supplying an argument in the args field for this run macro action, and that's actually going to determine the name of our scene. So let's open up this scene transitions argument from tile macro and see what's going on. Here we have the destination instead of being a static thing, it's going to be arguments from the tile and you can see the formatting is very similar. So let destination is going to be equal to the arguments from the tile here. And we can see in the original scene transition view only script, we had the town square in parentheses here, but now we're replacing it with arguments zero dot args zero. So these are arrays. And if you're not familiar with macros, then the simple way to think of arrays is just a list of different items of information being sent to the program. So with monks active tile triggers, the arguments zero is going to be all of the arguments sent from the tile. And then the args field here is additional arguments you can send. And so here we're taking argument zero, which is information from the tile, then args information from the run macro action. And we're going to grab the first item in the list of information. And we start counting at zero. So argument zero is the tile arg zero is going to be the very first piece of information from the args field in the run macro action. And so then if we're feeding it the scene name in quotations, and then feeding it into the macro, it's going to function just the same as if we had only put the scene name into the macro itself. So this allows us to have a really nice and flexible 
version of the macro that we can change quickly and easily on the fly. And then we're going to call that same view function that we used in the previous version. And again, we're going to have users and everything in our macro set up just the same way. So now when I click on the flexible scene Monk's Active Tile Trigger, we're going to play our transition and it's going to change our view to a different scene. And if I want to update the scene that we're going to, I'm just going to copy that directly from the configure on our new destination scene. Then it's as easy as opening up the active tile trigger and updating the argument. Once again, making sure to have our scene name inside of quotation marks. And now when I trigger this, we're going to view a different scene. So this is a great way to have a really robust tile trigger that's going to help us view a new scene that we can change very quickly and easily. This is really going to cut down the amount of macros we need for setting up tiles to go to multiple different destinations. And it's a lot faster than either making brand new macros or updating your existing macro to suit the new destination scene. But we can go even further. This final iteration I have here is called flexible elements or the full flex option. And this is going to just take that same idea of taking arguments from the tile and build upon that even further. So if I open up the scene transitions argument from tile macro again for a comparison, you can see that these are very similar macros. We're pulling the destination from the first entry in the args field, just like we did on the argument from tile, but then we're also going to be taking the second and third arguments to create the custom image and message content fields respectively. And once again, we're just going to put these inside of quotation marks within our args, and that is how we're going to be setting that off. Just one more time, because sometimes it can be a little confusing. The args is an array that is a list of different items, and we start counting from zero. So zero actually corresponds to the first entry, one corresponds to the second, and so on. So when we go to open up our tile and change these arguments, we're going to be putting these arguments inside of quotation marks and separating them with a space. And then that's going to delineate our first, second, and third entries that we then pull into the macro to then feed into the options for this scene transitions macro. Once again, we're going to be using the view option, taking our destination. And then content now is instead going to say message content, our variable that we're pulling from the tile args, as opposed to actually writing in a text string that we had in the previous version of the macro. And then our background image is again going to be that variable from up top, instead of having to type in the full file path. Closing these macros up, we can then take a look and see what this looks like in practice on a tile. Go into my actions. You can see that we have the town square, our scene as the first argument, and then we have the file path for our background image following that. Again, these are enclosed completely in quotation marks with a space in between the quotation marks. Normally arguments in the args field are separated by spaces, but as long as you have the quotation marks, surrounding your arguments, they will be considered as an entire object for the purposes of this macro. And then you'll notice at the end, I don't actually have a third argument put in here for the content. I just want to demonstrate that this will fire no problem without a message content. So you don't have to fill that in if you're wanting to have it blank. When we click on it, we have our transition into the town. And then we can just go back to our blank scene and update our tile in order to change the destination or the background image. So we're going to change this background image from a forest to a city. Then I'm going to go to the front and I still have our other scene copied so I'm going to paste that in and that will update both the destination and the background image. So incredibly quickly, we've already changed the destination scene and the background image by just changing the arguments really quickly. Now, obviously, it's made faster by me knowing the exact path for some of these background images, but you can still see how this is a lot faster than having to write new macros. And now I'm going to add some new content at the end to actually customize the different text that you'll see.
So with just a quick update, we've almost completely changed the functionality of this scene transition tile. This is a fantastic way to add a lot of flexibility to the tile without requiring a large amount of new unique macros. Full flex isn't the only possibility though when using Monk's Active Tile Triggers with scene transitions. Here I'm running a new scene transition that's in scene macro, and it's going to take a lot of cues from this full flex macro. Rather than having a destination up at the top, I'll open up the in scene version here, and we'll see that there are a lot of similarities. However, instead of the destination, we only have the custom image and message content. And since we're removing one of the args that we take, we're just going to decrease the number of those args by one. So rather than being arg2 or the third argument in the sequence, the message content is now going to be arg1 or the second entry in the sequence. And if we see this in action, we can see that there's this nice image of a painting hanging on the wall. So it's a really great way to add those, again, micro theater of mind scenes within your explorable maps. And opening this up, we have our familiar file path. And then you can see we actually have all of these open caret, closed caret uh, BRs or book returns, if you're familiar with HTML. So this will actually accept any kind of HTML writing. Same thing as if you go into the edit scene transition and you look at source HTML. Basically anything that you can put in there and save, you can also feed into either this argument or directly into the macro itself. So these BRs or book returns are adding additional lines of space at the beginning of our text. And that is exactly how we are lowering this text on the image when we click it open in the scene transition. You can get really creative with all these other ways to customize it too. And of course, one of our favorite applications amongst active tile triggers is teleportation. You can see on my player view here now, I have this tile set up so that I will teleport to a new scene and it's gonna play this nice scene transition. So scene transitions work great in conjunction with the teleport action from Monk's Active Tile Triggers. And you can see that for a player, it's incredibly smooth and it works just like any other Monk's Active Tile Trigger teleport, where you simply have to click on the tile and teleport to the new destination with the transition playing beautifully. Similarly to other Monk's Active Tile Trigger teleports, you'll notice that the token is being teleported, however, the scene's not changing automatically for you. That's purely because you are a GM. But you're still going to see the scene transition because of how the scene transition is set up. Here, I am only using this no destination macro as a demonstration. So that's the one that's not taking arguments and is just making sure only the triggering person sees it. But you can absolutely change this out for the scene transition that's in scene macro where you can customize all of the different imagery. Just like you don't have to use every option in the full flex script, you also aren't limited by only these options in the full flex script. You could take every single option in the scene transition macro and make it powered by an argument from the monk's active tile. But you probably don't want to make everything available via argument, otherwise you're just creating more work for yourself. I would keep some things constant such as your delays or make additional versions that perhaps have new background colors or text tints so that you can have general templates while still only having to change the really important and really flexible things such as the scene, the background image, and the message content. This is just the tip of the iceberg. I'm by no means a macro expert, so I'm sure those of you who are more familiar with writing macros for Foundry can come up with some really incredible ideas and please share them in the comments down below and on the BaileyWiki Discord. And if you know macros and are intimidated by all of this, please don't hesitate to reach out for help. It's the number one way to learn is just by asking others for assistance. That's going to conclude this installment of Automating Foundry with Monk's Active Tile Triggers and Scene Transitions. I hope this has shown you some really cool capabilities of scene transitions when combined with MATT, and maybe it's got you a little more interested in learning how macros work. In the comments, let us know about any cool ideas you have with Monk's Active Tile Triggers and Scene Transitions. We'd love to hear about them and perhaps incorporate some of those into our own designs. Once again, this has been Zephyr with the BaileyWiki channel. If you enjoyed this video, 
Subscribe to keep up with all of our latest content and consider becoming a patron. Not only do you support the channel, but you'll also gain access to all of the modular systems and scenes that we've ever made, including these town scenes that you've seen in the background and our landing pages that use some of the techniques showcased in this video. Once again, this has been Zephyr. Thank you so much for watching, happy gaming, and have a good one.